Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary. Joining me in the studio, Mark Spencer. Hey there. How are you? I'm great. Today we are going to do some fun stuff inside of Motion. Uh, we're going to stay in the 2D world inside of Motion. And the whole notion of shapes and replicators and what you can do with them, because I think when they come off the truck, they're just like an explosion of stuff. And you're like, whoa, way too yep. much. So I think, you know, if you could give us a few little tips and tricks on how to mm. how to use those uh, inside of our projects. Well, this is a little another tip about kind of a hidden thing and the power of another little hidden piece of motion. Motion nice. has a lot of little, you pull up in the drawer and you find something new, you didn't even know it was there. Undocumented stuff. Well, it's documented, but it's just not obvious what you can do. Right. And this is going to bring us back to shapes. And I know I talk a lot about shapes. We shut up with the shapes already. But this is another really cool use for shapes. Now, Motion in the library has a bunch of shapes stuck in the library here. There's like a five-sided star and a six-sided star and an arrow and various things. I've actually made some of my own. And we've talked in previous episodes about how you can export from Illustrator an object and make it into a motion shape via a script. Right. Um, so I've got a few here. Like I've got a hexagon and a curve. Shapes that I use that don't come, and especially that don't come with motion. I've got some spirals here. It's very hard to draw a spiral. Now this is vector art? Uh, this is vector art, okay. it's a shape, and any shape is gonna be vector. Okay. So for instance, here's a spiral. I'm just gonna click apply to bring it in, and I've got this, this spiral, mm -hmm. okay? And it's a shape. If I hit F5, you can see the little um, icon here. It's not only a shape, it's a paint stroke because it has an outline and no fill. So it can be animated and you can do all the normal shape things that you can do with it. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different with it. And that's this. I'm gonna take that butterfly and I'm gonna add a motion path behavior mm -hmm. to animate it, okay? So add behavior, basic motion, and motion path. And by default, you get this little red line. Let's back out a little bit so you can see it over here. And if we play, that butterfly moves along that red line. Mm -hmm. Okay, right off the screen. Yeah, right off the screen. And you can use this line. You can double click on it to add points and you can move them all over the place. And you can create a little real interesting path of the butterfly to follow. And in fact, if you add behavior, basic motion, snap alignment to motion, that butterfly will follow the curve of the path. Oh, okay, that's all great. But you're manually taking that path and describing a specific path it's following. But what if you wanted to follow a path of a shape? Ah, okay, right? I see so you're you going. Yeah, you can, this is what's so cool. So if I select this motion path behavior in the inspector for the behavior, it says, hey, path shape, open spline by default. But there's other options, including these things called geometry. And maybe really this title, this whole episode should be geometry because it's, what's geometry? Right. Whenever you see geometry in motion and it pops up all over the place, you need to think shape. Okay. That's what it means. It means the source will be a motion shape, not just a graphic, it has to be a motion shape. So I'll select geometry and I get a well and there's the hint, yeah, sure. shape yep. source. Yep. So geometry really should be shape. Right. Instead of geometry, it's confusing. So now I'm gonna drag that spiral into the shape source well Try to say that three times fast. Shape, shape, so I can't say it, forget it. <laughs> he got it once try. though, first try. Why don't you try? And now if I play, that butterfly will animate, and let's speed things up. I'll hit um, O to trim an out point, just mm -hmm. so he doesn't move quite so slow, and he moves along that shape. Right. Isn't and that you cool? have that other behavior, the snap to alignment, you know. that's why it's following it. Exactly. Okay. And then if I take that shape, I can increase the scale of it, and the butterfly will, kind of comes crazy at the end there, Sure. Um, will follow it wherever I put it and however big I make it. Okay, beautiful. And you can turn, of course, turn the shape off and just see him follow that line. So that's one thing you can do is for the motion path behavior, use a shape source. Mm -hmm. Here's something else you can do. I'm going to go ahead and get an emitter. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the library and I'm gonna to go to particle emitters and over to say sparkles. It doesn't matter which one, it'll show you how this works here. I'm gonna grab one, there's sparkles, magic wand. We'll grab the magic wand and I'm gonna throw that in our project. Okay, so by default, if I play that, I've got this little sparkle thing happening in the middle, blah, 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 blah. Right. And you can make a emitter emit things from a shape. Oh, okay? okay, so the same kind of idea holds. If I, I select the going. emitter, F4, to go to the fourth tab of the inspector, the shape of the emitter is a point. 
but I can choose geometry. geometry. Yeah. yeah, now there's a little bit of a trick here. So this is okay. the, sort of the important part because he's like, okay, I got it figured out. There's one thing here. If I drag the shape in there, where's my shape? There it is. Drag it in the shape source. Um, now those particles are going along the shape, but you may notice, in fact, to make it a little more obvious with emitter, I'm gonna set the speed down to zero so that the sparkles don't move and I'm gonna crank up the birth rate so we see more of them. Right, so it's basically just See how it didn't, it didn't, it's no bigger. Right. In other words, when I scaled the shape up, it affected the motion path, but it does not affect the replicator. So here's the fix for that. I'm gonna take that um, shape that I drew, F1 to go to the properties tab of the inspector, and just hit the hooked arrow to make it back the size that it was originally. And then this magic wand, I'll also hit the hooked arrow so it's in the middle. So see how they line up now? Right. Okay, so they both line up. Maybe let's turn off our butterfly so it's not distracting us for the time being. Now. We saw the problem was if I selected the shape and scaled it up, that the emitter didn't follow suit. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn the background off just so it won't get in the way of making a selection. My spiral shape is selected. From the tool menu up here, I'm gonna select the edit points tool. Okay. It's only available when a shape is selected. Then I'm gonna select all those points, all right? With those points selected, under the edit menu, there's something called transform control points. Okay. So rather than scaling the layer, I'm actually gonna transform the shape itself now. And because I'm transforming the shape itself, I'll hit Shift S to get out of that, and then go back to play, and those particles should update, and now the particles emit over that larger shape. Right. Okay, so it's a little bit of a trick that if you want particles, or in fact replicators, to follow a shape that you scale up, you need to transform control points instead of scaling a layer. Well, that begs the question, why, I mean, I had it scaling originally around that shape, why not just scale the replicator later? Scale the uh, scale the emitter. Yeah, the obviously yeah the emitter itself. Because then you, you you scale up each of the little particles would, would oh, get bigger. Oh, I and see. I, and I want to do that. I see That's what you what mean. would happen there. Got but it. now if I turn off that shape, you can see that these little particles are being emitted in a perfect little spiral, right. and we can crank up the birth rate to see them a little bit better. Okay, so it works great with particles. And just the last little example is it works with replicators as well. So let me turn that off and I'll turn our shape back on, and I'll go back to the library, and any of the replicators, and this can be your own replicators, your own particle emitters, I'm just using something from the library because it's kind of fast and easy to grab, but if you have any kind of object in your, um, in your replicator, you can make copies of it. I'll grab this one called Oblong, I'll throw it in here, and then I'll select it, and go to that fourth tab of the inspector, F4, and you can see the shape is set to a line right now. But once again, I can set the shape to geometry. Geometry. Drag the shape in the well and make a few adjustments, like the scale is way too big. I'll scale those way down and I'll increase the points quite a bit. And then those guys will follow that same shape. And I can turn off the source shape, make those a little bit smaller. They're so big. But now I have a replicated shape along a replicated object along that path, along that shape. And the whole thing works in 3D as well. Right. So you can have those shapes in 3D space and just go crazy. So the, the upshot is a motion path, a replicator, an emitter, all of those things can uh, be made along any shape that you have. Rectangle, closed or open, it doesn't matter. And motion comes with a lot of content. And so if someone were to look at, you know, for training, training by you, that would help them kind of really harness and understand all the things that motion can do, where would you point them? I would point them to Ripple Training. And that's a good place for you to go. <laughs> RippleTraining.com. Motion for fast forward. That's Motion, a good place to start. Yes, yeah, that yes. gives you the basic foundation. And then you also have uh, another intermediate advance. Mastering Motions, when you're ready, yeah. Mastering Motions camera is waiting there for you. To take the 3D yes. to the next level. Yes. Mark, thank you, as always, for coming in. And Thanks, thank Brian. you for watching MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Brian Geary.